Welcome to video 19 in our van build series. Today we're going to tackle our kitchen counter, faucet and sink. We chose a residential full size undermounted sink and a one and a half inch thick bamboo butcher block for our counter. Let's get started. Okay, now things are getting exciting. Here we have a beautiful slab of one and a half inch thick, unfinished bamboo butcher block. Double checking my measurements, I quickly started cutting this slab of wood down to size. Come on, you gotta like this. Seriously, this is gorgeous. First I want to show you a, a sample cut here. You'll notice how crooked this is. I was uh, preparing uh, to cut the sink uh, opening in the countertop. Now this actually isn't the countertop, this is the leftover piece, I'll explain in a second. But um, prior to uh, cutting the sink opening, because this is a recessed sink, the cut, what you cut is what you're going to see. Uh, it's got to be flawless and on top of that, uh, after we cut the sink out, we want to have the piece that we're cutting out saved as a cutting board, which of course will just remain in the position of the sink. So the cut has to be flawless. So I was going through my inventory of tools and definitely for cutting out a sink opening, uh, a jigsaw was going to be part of that uh, arsenal. And uh, you cannot cut uh, a straight line uh, with a, uh, a jigsaw, at least not the, the quality of uh, uh, tools that I have. And so I was just working with a little bit here and you can see it's, we tried a number of different things and, and I could not cut it straight. So um, I have taken the countertop, which I've already cut to size, and I did the uh, CNC uh, uh, drawing for it and took it down to a local cabinet place to, to use a CNC machine to cut the, uh, the sink out. So I'm gonna have that back uh, tomorrow. Now that I know that I can't cut a hole in my countertop and get the quality that I need using the tools that I own, it's time to call in an expert. Fortunately, right here in Arm Prior, we have a variety of excellent small businesses, including Jeff at Boza Cabinets. Boza Cabinets design, manufacture, and install custom-made cabinets. They will definitely have the tools and the know-how to make this cut for me. I discussed what I needed with Jeff and we immediately zeroed in on their CNC machine. Put it on an angle, you can actually see it run. This is cool. Yeah, it, allows you, it allows you to kind of preview what you're doing before you do too much with it. My bamboo countertop isn't cheap, so we first tested our measurements on a scrap piece of wood. To hold the work securely in place during the cut, Boza uses Fast Cap Speed Tape, a Canadian product, two-sided tape. With the tape installed on the underside of the countertop, time to make the cut. So this is loose? Uh, it might have tape on it. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh my gosh, is that gorgeous. Is mine dry? Is yeah, 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 okay. Holy crow, I can see the table underneath. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. Sandy on the 
we could make it a lot tighter. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. yeah. And my thinking is to have it really tight, uh, and then when I get home, um, I will experiment with a, a number of different round uh, drill bits. I want to find one that feels really good with the finger because you got to have a hole to stick your finger in and pull it out. Yeah. I won't do it to this right away. I'll do it to a, to a scrap piece of wood and find something my wife likes because it is a pretty significant chunk of wood. I mean, I can do that right here. Right. One, one inch hole, go like up, countertops. You put a one inch? I always put a one inch or a one and uh, one and eight feet drawer. It's enough to get the finger in and bend it around, but when you cut that piece of lamin down, it doesn't drop on the floor underneath it. So what I can do is a piece like this. Yeah. Side profile that we have in block a little bit. So yeah. we do our through hole. And then right up on the underside. So you're only grabbing. Three quarters I got it completely. Right. So you're not trying to get your fingers through this. I oh, got it. Totally I, I got it completely. It totally makes sense. Does this end on something? Uh, on the, uh, which is up, it's upside up right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Sinks here. I have four drawers built under here. Yeah. And over here I have a lagoon table. Lagoon table, it looks like an end table. Yeah. You can swing it out so you can have two people dining in the captain's yeah. chairs. It's yeah. awesome. I think you could use that little flip up somewhere or something. Just, uh, yeah. Or you even put legs on the outside table. Possibly, yes. We knew from the start that due to the depth of our bamboo counter, one and a half inches, we are going to have to use the larger one half inch router bit. And doing so would result in our cutout piece being a full inch smaller than the space we want it to fill when the sink is not in use. For this reason, we planned on two cuts, one to cut the hole in the counter and one to cut the sink countertop plug. Using a small scrap piece of bamboo, here we are aligning the grain of our second cut. The piece underneath will be the countertop plug that covers the sink. So when we switch over to 3D, we will assign different depths to those two different circles. Yeah, so right now it's just a, a two-dimensional drawing, so then we pull it out into a three-dimensional drawing, yep. and then we start applying tool paths to it. So we take our half-inch cutter and tell it, okay, so we want to go around the perimeter and cut out the perimeter. And then we want to cut out that internal uh, pass-through hole. Two-dimensional drawing is now three-dimensional. All right, and the blue line represents the radius. Yeah. So that's all the machine yeah. pad. Is the mm -hmm. I'm going to say the center of the drill bit of the router bit, and so the edge of the router bit would be on the blue. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So your tool radius correction. So it, you can run it on the line, inside the line, outside the line. There's varying situations okay. require different. So it knows the radius of the tool. We want it on the outside of the line, and so that yellow line represents the center of the router bit. Yeah. Very cool. Say that again. So each one of these orange lines represents one pass of that half inch cutter. Okay. So then we can actually simulate it. Just to see how it's gonna turn out. Very cool. And we're doing the, uh, the finger hole later. Yeah. Get the reflection off, there we go. Okay, that's good. So now we just got to add the now we're cutting inside the line. Yes. And we're going to cut to a depth of 0.75 inches. Yes. With our half inch cutter. And the vertical pass. We'll do that in, let's say, three cuts. Tilt this a little bit. Outside's cut, primary hole's cut. That was very quick. Time to do another test piece. We don't have any bamboo to spare here. We have to get it right. Not very corner, zero, zero. That's your okay. hole. Yep. All right, I think we're there. I mean, it's perfect. It's, we did her. Here we go for real now. OK, 
Okay, I'm not taking it off. Wow, you got to like this. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this. You got to be proud of that. That's cool, man. That is really cool. Well, that was such a pleasure working with Jeff. Here we are back in the hangar, and now I'm focused on mounting the sink. Silicon will be the primary adhesive along with eight of these clamps. Here I'm drilling a hole for the sink faucet. I also started on the backside or the underside because the cabinet walls and the sink were the location determining factors. Now, once the pilot hole punched through, I flipped the counter over to finish the hole from the top down to ensure zero tear out. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Little kettle. That is very, very cool. Just Peter Noon, and you're listening to Roger Espy, who used to be nobody. Our cover story. <laughs> Once again, the tape is being used on the drill bit, so I don't drill too deeply into the underside of the counter. Now here I am using carpenter's glue to coat the plug. This worked okay, but through further experimenting, I found that Gorilla Glue worked even better. Try for yourself to determine what works best for you. What do you think? It is gorgeous. I think I'm going to move in. I try to move the faucet thing. I want to see it uh, rotate. Yeah, that's great. That is fantastic. Wow, it's big and deep too, Linda. I'm sure you won't be sorry about that. Okay, put the thing back in. Got some sanding, lots of sanding yet to do. Nice touch with the finger holes thing. Wow, is that gonna be cool? It's just beautiful. So I'm going to, uh, let's flip it over. I'll pick this up. Get this off of here. Beautiful. So we left this part covered because uh, I wanted to have essentially uh, virgin wood to be able to uh, stick uh, the silicon to, which is the main binding component between the sink and the uh, and the bamboo let's take one more look at this to see what it's going to look like finished setting the countertop aside for a moment i have attached the undermount sink to a piece of plywood to temporarily hang the unit in place so i could get an accurate measurement for placing the microwave I'll cover the microwave installation in a separate video. 100% silicon will be our primary holding agent. Here I'm applying it to untreated bamboo. With the sink placed and set, I quickly attached the lagoon leg to determine the size of the leaf. The leaf is going to be made out of the same material as the countertop, bamboo. Having said that, I only want the leaf to be about three quarters of an inch thick, so several passes through the thickness planer were needed. With the bamboo planed down to three quarters of an inch, reducing half of its weight, 
I then bonded a 3 16 piece of pine plywood to the underside to significantly increase the integrity of the Mobile Lagoon tabletop. This completed tabletop extension is super strong and ready for polyurethane. Here I'm reducing the size of the Lagoon table mount. You'll see why in a minute. I haven't stained this board yet, but I wanted to share with you um, how I've modified this Lagoon table. Um, I'll just pull it off so you get a better look. There you go. I think you just saw just a minute ago, I just cut this down. I actually removed two inches off this side. And in doing so, it allowed me to move this leg that much closer to the wall. Essentially two inches closer. So rather than here being as close as I can get, I can now move into here. And ultimately the result is, uh, because I'm two inches further, it allows me to now extend two inches further over this way. So the reach, this will be going something like that. Um, let me bolt it down. This will come in like this. Somewhere in there. And uh, when I'm finished, I'll be able to pull it all the way out to here. And I've checked. We now have enough room to be dining from, from both locations. It brought the entire table two inches closer to this. So it's just a small change, but uh, it's certainly uh, worth uh, its time. And that'll be resting about there. Applying the first coat of polyurethane to the bottom side of the tabletop extension. With the polyurethane drying it's time for me to drill a hole in the van floor for the sink drain. This job started from the underside to determine the best location and then was completed from inside the van. The drain needs to be swept back behind the microwave down the wall and then back to the location of the hole between the frame members. The last coat of the polyurethane has dried and I'm now mounting the Lagoon table mount to the underside of the tabletop extension. Here is the finished countertop, a wonderful addition to our van. I'll show you how we mounted our microwave next. Cheers.